Welcome to Only One Can Win. I'm your host, Dami Sani, and you are joined by Chelsea fanatic, Jack Hoban. Good to be here, man. And our friend all the way from Boston, America, Kevin Cordova. Thanks for having me. Join us as we delve into the big story shaping in the world of sport today. Well, obviously we've got to start with the biggest speculation slash transfer that started up today. Cristiano Ronaldo said he wants to leave Real Madrid because, you know, he doesn't want to be in Spain anymore, guys. So what, what do you guys think of this? It's not because of that only, though. It's because he's uh, it's a tax evasion. So just like the other players, I mean, Lionel Messi, Mascherano, Neymar. So just in Spain, they don't I want to pay the taxes. I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence. But where could he go? So where could Ronaldo? Who could actually pay his way to go? There's probably four teams in the world right now that could probably pay the fee and pay the way as you PSG. Chelsea, Manchester United, and Manchester City. Bayern Munich can't afford the wages or the transfer fee, and he's not going to go to Barcelona if his fees still get taxed. <coughs> Wait, hold on. Bayern Munich can afford them. The, 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 I reckon they can afford them. Uh, one no, of the biggest stumbling blo uh, blocks, sorry, for the Alexis Sanchez deal is the wages for Bayern Munich. Mm -hmm. If they can't pay the wages for Sanchez, they're not going to be able to do that. Well, Ronaldo. Sanchez and Ronaldo are two different players. Though. Yeah, I agree, but Ronaldo is so, going to be 350 plus. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Bayern Munich are a self efficient club. It's just not in their DNA. Mm -hmm. You look at the players they've signed in recent years, the signings they've also made, like Javi Martinez and Levin Martinez Cruz. They just. Until Vidal. Yeah, they just wait for they the have, Dortmund players out of contract. And just they, have, up. <laughs> they have top players, but they don't necessarily pay top wages compared to a Real Madrid, PSG or Barcelona. See, the most interesting thing here for me is because you said Manchester United, and personally, I don't think it fits, well, maybe that is Ferguson in a way, but personally, I don't really think he'll fit right now. He'll give us goals, he'll do his thing, but I don't think he'll fit right now because we're, we're, we've elevated from that. Well, he, and he, he, he wouldn't Fernando's gone. necessarily fit Manchester City either. I mean, but the, I was just saying the teams that can afford mm -hmm. it. Personally, mm -hmm. he ain't going. He, no, he, I don't, I don't see, think you should go. We saw this. Rooney did this in 2010, and you said again in 2013. I mean, look, if these agents are sending these people, do you know what? Just just see what you can do. Stick a toe in, be cheeky, see what you can get out of there. Yeah, but there's certain the players that enough. can do that, though. Like, yeah, there's Ronaldo, true. and there's a big way you got between him and Rooney. That's I feel like true. Ronaldo can that's make true. the calls. And but, Messi's just got a brand new contract making him far superior in wage to Ronaldo. Which is funny. Because Ronaldo can actually, his production on the field actually warrants. The demand. The demand, yeah. or even yeah. what he wants. Rooney doesn't. So. Well, that's recently, though. I mean, he's been on a decline lately, so. Over the past two years, Ronaldo's continuously stated he wants to play at a competitive level. So that's just completely destroyed China and the MLS. MLS can afford him. Plus, yeah. Plus, you've just won the Champions League. You've just won La Liga. You're most likely going to win the Ballon d'Or in mm -hmm. January. Yeah, I agree. Anywhere else is a step down. Will he be able to compete for the Champions League at PSG? Yes. Yes. But because apart he, from this year, but they were destroying the French league. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. PSG. Real Madrid. I mean, mm. they have built a team at Real Madrid where Zidane now has the perfect balance in midfield. He's got the per perfect attack. He's got Varane. He's got Ramos. He's got arguably for me two of the best fullbacks in the world. In Marcelo. And, and the Marcelo. bench is better too. Yeah, but it's Hold on a sec. As well. East go. But if he was to go to PSG, but obviously this year that Monaco actually won the, the French the French league. Yeah, but this is the first year for Slatan now. Like Slatan was the main man. Also, but Cavani does miss a shot. I don't. I think this is a fluke for Monaco. Personally, P P uh, teams are buying their players now. Their the balance of their team is deteriorating. Oh, I can, I can play, so sorry. if he was to go to PSG and he he win the Champions League, not just the league, I reckon he'll he'll still be a okay PSG. On the Champions League front, I still don't think they would have anywhere near the chances of teams at Real Madrid. And the same goes for Manchester United and Manchester City and Chelsea. If he goes to any of those teams, not saying he will, he won't be able to be at that elite level of a team compared mm -hmm. to Real Madrid. Real Madrid is just historically. Real Madrid are the best team in the world right now, not just for Ronaldo. They just have a history of winning. Yeah. So, so let's say Ronaldo leaves in the scenario he leaves. Does this mean, you know, as a Chelsea fan, you know? Would they bid for Hazard? No, I don't think so. Not because, oh no, there's no way Hazard would leave us. He's out for three months. Mm -hmm. 
it's going to be pretty so, hard to pass a medical you know what, with as a broken ankle. As a Chelsea fan, is that injury, has that made you excited considering the situation with Ronaldo now? No. <laughs> because think Would, about it. Do you think it's, good, it's a good business I, for you? you the think? way I see it. But the remember what you were saying before? Is that if, if the this club came to, for me, I'd, I'd be open to, to the call. You were saying that before you got yeah, injured. But if you read the full transcript of that mm -hmm. interview, the interview was trying to push him to get an answer of saying, I want to go to Real Madrid. And he was kept trying to backtrack away from that. What he was saying was that the interviewer kept asking him, did you watch the final? Mm -hmm. Did you watch the final thinking, oh, that could have been me. I could be part of this Real Madrid team. And his answer was yes, of course. But I also watched that thing and I could be on the bench. I could not be playing for Real Madrid. I could just be a squad player. It's really difficult to bring that first team, especially with all those superstars yeah. and egos. He, he's a top and if Zidane doesn't like you, he's not going to play. Look what happened to Hamas. Hamas had a good year, first good season, Bale but after and Bale as well. But after the second season, uh, Zidane didn't really use Hamas like that. It's very difficult to bring in that first team, so it's up to. I, I don't see Hazard's injury as a blessing itself. The way I see it is, I think Hazard will leave Chelsea one day. What do you think? Never thought it'd be this summer. I don't see it as a blessing. The way I see it is this: he's not going to have a full pre-season. He's not going to be yeah. fully fit until maybe he's not the end of September. Season. You remember the season he had two years ago? I, I, think. I don't think but it'd be like that. If no, Conte's no, no, but still I, there. I think the, like he has more, well, not an excuse, but he has a reason to, for not performing yeah. well because of injury. But two years ago, it's because he was just terrible. Yeah. So there is that difference. He was, injured, he was injured two years ago and he was playing through injuries. That was, mm. that was part I of I think that was the, a mistake too. That was part of they the had to play toxicness. Well. Oh, sorry. That was part of what made it so toxic in the dressing room. Mourinho and the board, more so Mourinho, kept trying to get him to play through mm. the injuries. That's why you saw Hazard just walking off during that Leicester But game. what can you do, man? You're a big team. Well, the way I see it is You're champions at that time as Hazard, well. Hazard's not going to get full pre-season. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be fully fit until September. We're playing away at Tottenham in the second game of the season at Wembley. Hazard, I don't know, will be fit for that game. And that is a You'd massive a game in the title decider. So, no, no, I don't ah, see they're, they're playing at Wembley, man. You should be fine. Tom Tom's not a good record. Wembley, Tottenham they don't have a good record at Wembley. Secondly, dude, it's the second game <laughs> of the season. Yeah, but you, these are the games that you look back on. Like this, throughout it's the whole not season. a title decider, though. No, I don't mean it's going to swing the title, but... Okay. It, it dictates the pace of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. okay. When I think you've been when, you look at it this way. When Chelsea played Manchester City at the Etihad in the second, second game of the season, mm -hmm. it was, and when we finished ninth, we got battered. Big time. What was it? Four one in the end. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. And it just, just wiped us. It just absolutely wiped us. Mm. And it set the tone for City. Although City collapsed in the second half of the season, it definitely set the tone for us. And that's what I mean in a title decider. Whoever wins that game isn't guaranteed the title. They're not guaranteed top three. But it sets the tone for the season. Tottenham wins that game at Wembley. They have so much momentum. They've just finished second last season. After they finished three third at the start, remember? That didn't dictate. Yeah, that's true. They started but well. It, and did so it did dictate. It did dictate. In a good way. Yeah, but it still dictated. But I mean, in a bad way, though. Obviously, if you guys lose against that game, it would dictate the, the pace in terms of yeah. negatively because you wouldn't it's, be. It really does set the time. That's, that's the problem with yeah. having these fixtures so early. I think teams, when you look at fixtures, the big, big games, that was at the start of the season. You look at the past few years when Manchester City played Liverpool in 2014-2015, when United and Chelsea played each other in 2013-2014, they tend to be quite dull games because both teams are very cautious. Yeah, it's okay if you draw. Yeah. You I don't like the draws, man. That's the draws are just like... If, if that fixture was more down the line, mm -hmm. say near Christmas, and then it becomes a bigger <coughs> game, teams are more open, they want to win the game. It's a big game for Chelsea, and they can't afford to have Hazard 50% at best. That's mm -hmm. that's why I don't see it as a blessing. What but if... I mean, we're going a bit off topic here with Hazard. What <laughs> if... So, obviously, you're, you're an Arsenal fan. So now, what if Chelsea were to buy Sanchez now? How would that make you feel? And how could he incorporate into your, in this Chelsea system? Because without Hazard at the start of the season, it's a big blow. Oh, to be fair, though, was, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did leave. Sanchez wants to stay in London. He wants to stay in London, to but to I wouldn't be surprised if he did leave Chelsea. Chelsea, as much as it pains me to say, is Arsenal have not been having a winning mentality in the longest time. And Chelsea, obviously, I mean, look at them. They they were ninth last season. They made one adjustment. They bought Conte, and now they're and they bought uh, Golo Conte and Antonio Conte, mm -hmm. and they won the league. So, 
Chelsea, uh, Sanchez, want, he's, a, he's a competitor. He wants to win titles. He wants to, he strives for the best. He, he wants to be considered in that Ronaldo level. So going to a club that has that winning mentality like Chelsea, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he went. So it depends on like how we fit in Chelsea's system. Oh, if Conte okay. would use him. That'd be an absolute game changer. Um, that would be a momentum swing. I'll, would, I'll get a little shook. That, that, would be, that would be an absolute game changer. Even if Manchester City got him, that'd be an absolute game changer. Mm. Whoever gets him, if he does leave. He, he's and who good replaces good. Sanchez? That's the real question. Yeah. Arsenal are not big spenders. Yeah. Arsenal are not big spenders. Does, especially if he leaves Arsenal, be a, a massive boost to that team. And would that team could potentially... But I, I think he would go to Man City first because he's played with Pep Guardiola before. Mm. So he's, he's no, he knows Pep's system, even though he was a Barcelona well, league sold him. That's true. So, but back to the original question that you asked, Ronaldo's not going to go. No. What's going to happen is he's going to get a new contract. He signed a new contract in November he's had a, yeah. for, for six years. He's get an <laughs> yeah. He's get an he wants to play until he's 41. Look, he wants to do is, look, I can't be mad at Ronaldo. If this means he's holding like, his remedy for ransom for more money. Man, just pay, pay man. just pay your taxes, man. You wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> just pay your taxes. Right, guys. Now, let's talk boxing. The date is set. Both men have agreed terms. Conor McGregor will take on Floyd Mayweather in Las Vegas on the 26th of August. Yeah. Match is on, man. So, guys. It's, it's a dumb fight. Who, who's your, who's, okay, firstly, who's your pick? Mayweather. Mayweather. It's, Mayweather. Not gonna be it's a boxing Mayweather. match. It's not, it's not MMA. The thing is that Mayweather's been doing this since he's a child. Like, he, his family, his uncle, Roger Mayweather, was a former world champion. Like, he's yeah. studied the art of boxing. When you talk mm. about Mayweather, you're talking about one of the greatest offensive boxers of all time. He's in the line of Willie Pepps, Nicolino Lodge. Like, he's a, as much as you like to criticize him, he's a really good defensive fighter. Mm. He's, no. he's going to, uh, McGregor's going to be taught a lesson. It's, it's going to be... What I don't like about this here, like, I said this to Jack before, yeah. It's like, basically, I don't know, Real Madrid taking on the Golden State Warriors. It, just, it, just it doesn't make. It's a different sport. I know it's people. Sport. People think that it's the same thing because it's fighting, but it's a different. Exactly. It's an actual different sport. It's a different mm-hmm. science to apply. He has um, former boxing training. Yeah, but how long? When he was at Ireland. But we're it's talking about someone yeah. nine and nine. We're talking about a world champion. We're talking mm-hmm. about one of the greatest defensive boxers of all time. I honestly think Weber is one of the elite boxers that we've seen. And McGregor will get disqualified in the match. I think. The, I think. The, right I, I think the mistake was that McGregor entered Mayweather's world. Like Mayweather's smart enough not to know, not to go to MMA. Yeah, it was Mayweather. It was, it was the money. It was, it was the money. McGregor that needed the fight. I. I. That's true. He money. dictated the terms. Yeah. It's the money. Because at the end of the day, this is what, especially, fight stuff like this. Like money dictates it. So it's a business, not a sport. It's a business. Boxing true. is a business, not a sport. I don't know what Dana White's gonna do, with Conor McGregor now. Well, because if he goes back, will he be like, stripped? Will he be stripped? Firstly, and secondly, Connor's gonna obviously, be like, dude, I, I'm the shit now. I'm, I want more money. Sorry, yeah. Could, could the UFC the, the thing is have enough capital or money it, for that? It's a know? win-win for McGregor. He loses. He makes money. He makes a lot of money, more money that he could have made in about two, three UFC fights. Mm. But he's still able to walk into the UFC because he didn't lose to a UFC fighter. No, he still has his titles, but they're fighting at what, light middleweight? See, Floyd is, uh, I think McGregor's naturally bigger. That's probably the only problem Floyd would have. But he did for Oscar De La Hoya at 154, or I don't know how that is in kg kilograms, but at light middleweight. So he's he's fought up in that weight before. The question is, he's going to use a catch weight. Like, is he going to ask McGregor to come down more? Because he... Uh, Definitely. Like, the original weight is one... That's the weight limit, 154 pounds. We've seen him over there that he obviously calls the shots. He He takes the gloves with Madonna. Everything. I say the biggest question is, will McGregor be able to catch him with a punch? No. No, I don't think so. I think he'll probably give him a jab lightly, but Mayweather's only taking what? Like seven shots like with Mosley and then Pacquiao. I mean, you, you and Maidana, that's the only shots I've actually seen him I take. I remember that Shane Ridley fight. Yeah. That was a good fight, man. But he actually like, got hit. Like, yeah. You know, this is actually a good match. Man. Yeah, because Mayweather's not going to... You look at um, 2015, Pacquiao versus Mayweather. For all the punches he threw, he didn't get close to Mayweather. And that's people criticised yeah. Mayweather for... Before. Yeah, but that I, I feel like that 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 fight he shouldn't be criticized. That was I feel like that was the Pacquiao's camp's fault for not like oh, uh, like not really releasing the information out to show that they should have fought yeah, 100%. And, and that's why I don't like when people look back at that fight. They're all oh, but Pacquiao's arm. Oh, that's fight. nonsense in my But at the end of the day, if you knew your your fighter was injured, you can just obviously postpone it. Yeah, but there's too much money involved there. Because yeah. the, the reason yeah. in in America, May May is too. Mexican Mexican Americans love boxing, they do. and that's uh, Cinco de Mayo weekend. So like that was part of the plan. Like 
who can dominate Cinco de Mayo. That's the way most people gather together and buy the pay-per-view. And more, a lot of, especially like me, Hispanics love boxing. And that's a, for Americans, that's an excuse to get drunk and watch fights. <laughs> so like they want to dominate, that's why they want to dominate that date. Yeah. Or same thing September, if he doesn't fight in May, he'll fight in September, because that's the Mexican independence around that time. Mm -hmm. So they, they know Mexican fans well, are going to buy it. look at um, September the 16th, Triple G versus Canada. That's For me, that's the for bigger me, match. Yeah, that's the 100%. biggest fight. 100%. That is, that is what we need boxing for. Big matches in boxing, two boxers. When you start putting in UFC fighters, it's just, just collision. It's just yeah, just no, reason, no it's a, the, yeah. The, the thing is, boxing, like, as much as I love boxing, the, it's a, it's 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 in a state right now. People don't know the champions. There's four titles, and then there's no, this catch. That's true there's too. there's that's paper true. champions. So like this kind of embarrasses the sport in a way. As much as I don't like Oscar De La Hoya, it, he was right. Like it is embarrassment to the sport. Like Mayweather's retired. Why why is he still getting all the press coverage when there's a bunch of fighters like Triple G, Canelo, Keith true. Thurman still fighting? He's a great fighter, but he doesn't need to get the same Anthony amount Joshua of. And Oscar, Anscar, Anthony Joshua just beat Klitschko. The other. Good book to... I was just about to talk about Joshua versus Klitschko. For me, that fight was incredible. That that reminds but me of like the Arnie days. I am days. more excited yeah. for Triple G versus Canelo. That's the fight mm, yeah, I've wanted true. to see. That has been the biggest fight in boxing for the past year. Yeah, you know, I want to see that fight because, in my opinion, uh, well, tri Triple G has more belts. Canelo does have the true chat title. He beat Cotto, who beat Sergio Martinez. So, and the thing that annoyed me about Canelo was like, oh, I'm going to fight him, but then he goes on to fight another fighter. Which, to me, is like, you say you're Mexican, you're proud, but you, call, you put a move like that. I love how they introduced that fight. Yeah, at the end of the you know, fight, do, yeah. Do you know what? It was yeah. like a, it was, it was like WWE. WWE. Yeah. It was WWE. His music hits, and you just see Jesus just walk So they planned it, they planned but, it. Yeah, yeah maybe you need, you need things like that, though, because, like you said, boxing is like, people are starting not to watch it, they're confused. You need that. Yeah. You need it to be a show. I mean, That's we, why we, people like, hey, I like Flo Mayweather, because he's a show. You know, you said I mean, Ali did it. Ali smoked like a butterfly, sing like a bee. He, he used had to... the bars as well, and he wasn't yeah. even a rapper. Yeah. All right, so in this match, Flo Mayweather and McGregor, who do you think fans will want to lose? They want Mayweather to lose. Yeah, want... mm -hmm. Mayweather, look, Mayweather, he's talked trash. He's, mm -hmm. They just don't like the arrogance. Uh, but that sells seats, though. Every, every fight, people want Mayweather to lose. Do you know why I don't like that? Going back to the arrogance thing, yeah, like, they're both the same. They're both the same. Personality-wise, yeah. But why do people hate Floyd Mayweather worse than McGregor when they're exactly the same, just in two different sports? Because McGregor's more rash. <sighs> I mean, the same. You, I wanna, you look at the press the conference of UFC 205 before the fight. She, when she when they got like hyped up to McGregor, yeah. McGregor turns around and then says, who the, who the hell is that guy? See, what people I don't like about that, because he, Mayweather... But if Mayweather, Mayweather did that, They'd be like, oh, who are you, Mayweather? Why are you saying that? When McGregor does it, oh, it's funny, yeah, McGregor, go on. I don't understand what the difference is. They're uh, exactly the same person, just in two different respective sports. I don't want to say race plays in it. I really I, I don't want to think, use the race I card, think it, but it, it is. When, when, uh, not to bring race into it, but when a black athlete is boisterous and out there, yeah. they don't like it. You see, if Anthony Joshua was like Mayweather, no one would like him. But because he's humble, he's quiet, you're right, mate, how's it going? Yeah. yeah, but Lennox Very Lewis cool. was like that too. But you guys That's didn't, true, you guys man. didn't show him love either. Like Lennox Lewis, you guys said he was boring. It's it's very. He, I, if anything, you guys say he wasn't British enough. That's true. And he was just he's regular humble guy. Weird, didn't talk weird, trash. Yeah, it's funny you said that because actually, like, I didn't realize it was British until a couple years later. I actually thought it was American too. No, he's no. Uh, we thought he. Uh, we knew he was British. <laughs> yeah. he, he does not have an American accent. You guys are there. But I, I just, th I just think. I just think it, it's just I don't know. It's just it, it could be race. Could be a factor. I mean. Well, I think there's a lot of people that don't like McCracker as well. No, I know a lot. Look, I have black friends who love McGregor. They love McGregor. Maybe because he's different to us. He's a, he's an Irishman talking crap. Like, we don't we see that see, a lot. Uh, okay, from this, like, side of the point, we see that all the time. Like, I've been on holiday where I've seen Irish people like that banter. The yeah, but you don't see, like, Irish... Am I, like, you don't see, like, Irish-Americans are not the same as Irish-Irish. So mm -hmm. it's, it's different. It's probably, like, it's like a foreign thing. Like, he has the accent, maybe. Like, I have friends who love McGregor. But yeah. then I have other friends who don't like Mayweather. So it's, it's a catch-22 right there. I think, I uh, personally think people would want to see Mayweather lose more. Oh, yeah, but they always want to lose. They always it, want it, to lose. It, it, it's, it's, it's it's the greatest guy in the underdog as well. That is true, too. And, and Americans do love an underdog story. Yeah. So, they, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they, people want... They know May, their, their money's with Mayweather, but their heart's with McGregor. For sure. Where will you guys be watching the match? What time is it at? It's a struggle watching games nah. here, man. It's a struggle. It'll be like 5 a.m. Dude, it's a struggle. Like, I'm going to try to watch it. Preliminary round. <laughs> I like I don't, I, wait, but who's on the other card? Is there an undercard? 
I'm not too sure they'll be able to go there. I'm not sure if they've announced that. You know, no, I'm not sure like, it's sure yeah. quite been announced. Yeah. But I'll, I will be watching it either at my house or down the line. Streaming, streaming. <laughs> I ain't paying for that paper for you. I'm broke. Yeah, if anyone's showing. I've shown a lot of the fights. At 5 a.m.? Yeah. You guys close at 11 here. You guys I think yeah. loads of pubs. Like, all around what pubs do you go to? Like they show WWE events and stuff like that. No, I'm, I'm streaming what, it. What pubs do you go to? Jesus Christ. <laughs> you just kept this side, just laughed it off as well. We'll he goes to some on the ground pubs, doesn't he? He goes to some like, illegal like, stuff right there. What pubs do you go to? Jesus. <laughs> there, there's, there's certain pubs that stay open. But like, I've personally never done it, but a lot of my mates do it. And I think I'm going to have to do it for this part. Stream it, man. Stream it at home. Get some popcorn and just, you know, we're not worrying about it. Go to pubs. Like, they, they, like they normally be closed, obviously. But yeah. they, open, they stay open late. On the ground, yeah. they get loads of the punters in. Oh. Uh. All right, well, earlier this week, the Golden State Warriors defeated Cleveland Cavaliers <sighs> LeBron, 4 1 LeBron, to reclaim the Larry O'Brien Trophy. And here are the highlights of game of their Game 5 victory. See, it's Kyrie Evan. Do you know what? I watched this game and it, it, it was a good game. I like, it was a good game. Obviously, this, both teams started out strong. Yeah, I mean. Started out strong. And uh, over, like, Overall, the, the opening sequences, you can really tell that Cleveland really wanted to well, stay they, in this competition. They started, they, they, were, they won the first quarter. I mean, they scored 37 points, and you would think that they were going to make a comeback. But then it just went down uh, after the second quarter. I, I was watching <sighs> even, the, even the second quarter, man. Like, Look at that layup. You, you, can see that it, you can see that LeBron was just doing too much. I, I oh, watched oh, this for sure. way nice too dunk. much. Way too much. And... Oof. Jesus Christ, the bench, nowhere to be seen. Carl Corver. Well, and Iguodala scored. He scored at the... Well, Golden State's bench was good. Yeah, Golden State's bench was good. But, uh, yeah, the bench of uh, LeBron's, four points. Huh? There was no help. No, Darren Williams, no points. No Kyle Carver, nothing. Look at that. Right up the middle. And uh, I saw that on a couple of occasions. Iguodala would go straight into the heart of the defense. No one even stopped him. He scored 20. He, he, he was the sixth man of the, uh, sixth man of the night. Honestly, this three this, points. It's the thing with the problem; they weren't defending that well. They, that, there were plenty of times. That's the whole there point. Open threes. They went through the. Threes, they went through, the, they yeah. went through the paint. They weren't guarding the paint as well. It was just. It, it was just. I mean, LeBron needs more. Like, as much as I hate to say this, LeBron does need a little more help. But who, I mean, who could they get? I mean, they say they uh, uh, Paul George, but I don't know if. I think that, that's they, the problem with the league right now. The super teams. Um, yeah, like the playoffs for me have not been that good at all. You know why? Because everyone knew it was going to be was LeBron, uh, and Cleveland and Golden what State. Was your, my standout game was the Wizards and Celtics. Celtics. For me, that's what the playoffs are about. Even look at this now. No, no Tristan one, Thompson no one, and West. No one that is what the playoffs are about. In that series. That but that's what made it exciting. Yeah, but no one cared because they knew they were going to lose to the South. They were going to lose to Cleveland. Mm. But you know, the thing is, like the league, M the NBA has always been built on dynasties. Look at the 60s, yeah. the Celtics but, dominated. Mm -hmm. 1980s, it was always the Lakers versus the uh, Celtics, but no one complained about it. Yeah. Chicago Bulls in the 90s, early 2000s, Lakers, Spurs. It's just that's how the league has been built on. The only problem is that people are complaining about the super teams. Like I said, like we were talking all, about earlier. I'll, I'll go to say a super team. All the, all the they players. got Kevin Durant. Uh, Kevin Durant got this. They got Kevin Durant, all arguably the, the second best player in the world. All their players, Curry, Draymond, Thompson, the players that they actually drafted were quite low in the draft. Yeah. Draymond get a second round. Come on, man. That's, so I don't know if it's a but, super team. But they've got two of the top three players in the world. And then That's they've right got too. Draymond. And they added... And then they've got Iggy. Mm -hmm. And then they've got Clay. So would you say... Matt Barnes, that... Iguodala is like... I think it, it, they added to their roster. They just yeah. added to... Getting, getting Kevin Durant was a plus. So is Kevin Durant starting a new trend instead of I don't building think, a team? No. He's joining the super team. Is that a new trend that will start happening now? Uh, I mean, technically, it's, start, we, it's had it happen before. Look at Charles Barkley. He went to the Phoenix Suns to win. And he went to one NBA... And then he went to the Rockets. And then he went to the Rockets as well. Same yeah. thing with Dennis Rodman. He went to the Chicago Bulls. From it's, the Detroit Pistons. From the Detroit Pistons. 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 It's not like it's it's not it's not as like this is a new thing. It's just the thing is people are, maybe because we're in the social media age and the reason why people hate LeBron for it because there was a press conference. Even I will That's admit, true. I hated when he's like, I hated the whole big extravagant yeah. event. J.R. Smith with that. So, so, so J.R. Smith helped in this game. 
From the Knicks. Actually, he was from the Knicks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was from the Knicks. Knicks. I mean, to be fair, the Knicks sucked. I though. remember what. I remember uh, a, a couple of times occasionally. Oh my God. Run would go in, that. and he would actually dish it to Jr. Smith. He knew that I have someone right there who's actually helping me in this game. Kyrie Irving didn't have a good game either. Kyrie Irving was he, quiet. Kevin yeah. Love, I'm never gonna mention him. Kevin Love. Oh, Kevin Love. He scored his first field goal in the fourth quarter. That's just unacceptable for a starter as well. Yeah. It's unacceptable. Kevin Love can't play defense either. He can't really guard anyone. That's his problem. We saw that and Golden 120. State took the chip. So trilogy's over. I'm. I was kind of like looking forward to this because this is the first time we've ever had a trilogy. Usually it's just like in the 80s. It's just like okay, it was uh, the Lakers or someone else. It wasn't back to back to back. This is the that's why it's I like it more than a trilogy. But this is gonna happen again. 100. Like we're gonna go into the playoffs. Yeah. N next April. <laughs> and it's <laughs> literally just gonna be okay. When's June? <laughs> well, that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what the problem is? If the Cavs don't get anyone, it's going to be. Go to State again, yeah. Will they sweep them? Or will do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Really? Yeah, there's an there's a, there's a, like, option on FIFA to sim the game, simulate the game. That's what they need in the, in the, in the end. They should do it. They should just simulate the finals. Oh, the regular season. The playoffs until. Right. The regular season, you know, the problem is it's just too many games. 82 games, it's meaningless. Like, even the even those, uh, Cleveland admitted that they haven't taken the regular season seriously. I saw it was I think a big, the big baby Davis, he was on Colin Cowherd, and he said that there's a difference between regular season and playoffs. When you, yeah. at reg, Playoffs, you get a book. A book I remember this saw big. That. Yeah, I saw that. And they true. tell you, yeah, okay, true. this is what he does. He drives to the left. It's true. This is what he does it's in the paint. He's a perimeter shooter. Tactics, it's man. a different tactic because they and take it more every seriously. Every point actually counts in the playoffs. Yeah. Every single point. It's not like... You lose one game on the road, and next, ah, we got next game. It's like yeah. you need to perform. You can't score six points. You can't be sporadic. You, you can't, can't take a day off. You just can't. Yeah. It'll, be in, it'll be interesting to see uh, what they're going to do in the new offseason. Hopefully, they have to fit the cap. It's not like over here where you can just spend your money. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, the yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. Like, who are they going to get? They're always increasing the cap. Yeah. I honestly, there's a lot of rumors that LeBron might go to... Clippers, LA. LA, nah. Lakers. LA, no, because I think. Maybe come to the Clippers, then we win the ring next year. Yeah, that's not happening. Ah. Well, he might leave. Blake Griffin might leave. He might come to my team. Man. So, I, I, don't want, I don't want him in my team. <laughs> no, he's soft, man. You said he was so hot. He's soft, man. Griffin's you always soft. see him flopping and whatnot. I was like, no, he's not soft. Yeah, he's soft, man. He would, be, huh? he would help He could lot. help the Celtics, that's true, but like, he I'm would not. Make a, the East a little bit more interesting. I'm not, I'm not a fan of Blake Griffin, so I don't know. I don't I'm know. Like Chris I'm Paul sorry, too. Like, you can't get Westbrook right now. Yeah, okay. yeah. How about Chris Paul to Spurs? There's a lot of rumors that he might go to the Spurs. He'd be a great addition. Yeah. Would they be able to top off the Warriors? You can't cut the Spurs out. They're always a perennial. That's like the, thing, yeah. the Spurs are consistently Great in the playoffs. Season, I know yeah. they're boring to some people, but that's the essence of pure basketball. It's team basketball. You don't have a highlight with the Spurs. But then again, their superstars are getting old. Ginobili's getting ooh, up there in age. Ooh, ooh. Mm. Say Spurs get CP. Will they beat the Warriors next year? No. no, I don't think so. so there we go. I think I think it'll be a tough game. It'll be closer. It'll be a close game, yeah, but it's. Yeah, but it's you have to remember this year that the, that the Spurs were actually beating Golden Kawhi. State in, in the Oracle, and oh, then Kawhi got injured. So we can't forget that. Kawhi. If they do add CP3 to the addition of their team, it'd be a good backup. With Kawhi, but say Kawhi, Kawhi didn't get injured, Audrey, would, yeah. do you think the Spurs would have won the series? No. It no, you know why? Because there's too much three-point three shooting right there. The game's changed totally yeah, now. It's, it's, it's all about three points. It's the gaps the Warriors get because you've <coughs> got Steph, you've got Dre that can hit the three-point, and you've got Clay. Clay Thompson. And you're, you're, trying, you're trying to stop them, and then you've got this guy called KD. <laughs> that's yeah, just that's open, true. and true. they can shoot from anywhere. I know it's like even in the game, like watching yeah, the game again, there was a lot of open threes that they had. Open threes, but they were able to so drive up the paint. Like, threes, like, yeah. These, but they just they just knew how to stretch the Cavaliers' defense. They knew how to pick up open spots. They knew who was free. They knew who to go to, who to attack. But my question is, do you think uh, Kevin Durant should be criticized for hopping to another team? So now, yeah. So that's actually a good 100%. question. So. See, here's the thing with me. But is his is his move to Golden State not validated now? Because he's wondering in he's his first gonna, attempt. He was always going to pick the Rick. He wasn't going to want to put the work in there. Oh, I completely agree. Well. No, but in the work's much games, easier. The, the work is much points easier. in five games. He, Come on. That's yeah, yeah but, but, but he joined the team. LeBron guarded him. him. Come yeah, but on. look at the team he had around him. He, he joined the team that killed him. He's like, you know what? If you can't beat him, join him. I can't, okay, that's what I can't respect. That's what I can't respect. When, it's when like, Jordan dude, come on, really? When Bird was getting destroyed by Pistons, he didn't join them. He didn't join the Pistons. He hated the Pistons. When Bird was getting destroyed by the LA Lakers, he didn't join them. He wanted to beat them. So it's interesting, but it's a different era now. When you see it's T more free agency now, yeah. Firstly, when you see TNT, like, uh, we're shacking them a lot. 
the first thing Shaq says to Charles Barkley every time they have a point, hurry, I'm just, sorry, the, the ring committee is just calling me now. Come on. Yeah, but like, George Gerard in 20 years hasn't been an analyst who has Yeah, no but there's great Come players on. who never, like Elgin Miller never won a championship. He's still a great player. Charles Barkley's a Hall of Famer. He's Charles Barkley player, won yeah. a gold medal. Like, the, 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 being a Hall of Famer is amazing. What about Stockton? Stockton John Stockton's a great player, too. Carl Malone. I don't. I think they do that. You know why? Because Shaq has a big ego problem. Like Shaq, if you, if you ever watched the show, like he likes to poke fun. But when you poke yeah. fun at him, he's a big baby. He, he does. Doesn't like he doesn't it. like it. His yeah, ego yeah. boosts. And Charles Barkley gets him like, well, if I had Kobe and all that, I would have yeah. million champions yeah. too. No, it's just it's, it's difficult. I, I think that um uh you know Barkley didn't win a championship, but uh, I mean Kevin Durant, you could still uh, be a respected player. It's tough to win a championship. It's not easy. That's why people have to praise LeBron for consistently making it to the finals. He consistently make it. I what, is it six finals appearance or what? Seventh. Seventh? No, I thought it was his eighth. I, I meant so even, even yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. It's his eighth. So wait, so now is Kevin Durant better than LeBron James now? No. This, this, no, I think this, LeBron's this, still an overall better player. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Kevin Durant's probably the second best player in the world. Do you think he's getting closer to that, the, the stratosphere, the LeBron stratosphere? Yeah. Is he getting closer? That's fair to say. I would not put him as the best player in the world. I mean, you look mm. at LeBron's past three years in the finals performances. You look at his first um, year back with the Cavs. He brought him to the finals. With no help with, in the finals. they went into the finals. No love, no, no, no Kyrie. Love or Kyrie. He's a difference maker. I'm like, yo, Kevin Durant is a difference maker. Yeah. His two, his yeah. two uh, biggest supports was Della Padova and Moscow. Don't say that. Della Padova. <laughs> yes. you got to say it's Della Padova. Della Padova. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and they won two games. And then you look at last year. I mean, come on. They were three one down, and that, the, the game, the game, the game. Him and Kyrie hit forty each. Oh man! The block in game oh, seven. That was a good oh, block. I mean, yeah. Kyrie's his performance. Kyrie was just no, I mean, I think, I think, I think. I think we we got to remember, he had a triple double average in his finals. That's true. That's it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, man. I, th I think Kevin Durant. I think LeBron is better than Kevin Durant because, like LeBron, as you said, he makes a big difference. You can put him anywhere in the league, and you'll guarantee you, you're going to prove your team. He's a difference maker. Kevin Durant, as great as he is, he was in a good team, OKC, but they still couldn't reach the hump. To be fair, though, the Western Conference is harder than the East. Oh, 100 percent. That's why I think he's scared to go to if he was to go to LA. But as a last question for basketball, do you think that this loss will? damage LeBron's legacy. See, I used to be a LeBron hater, but like I don't think it, it should. I mean, look at this, look the numbers back speak for itself. I mean, he's made the finals at least eight times and he's put up the performance. And yes, he, people get on him for the Dallas loss, but he's still a great player. The problem is in America, like, they, they have this image of Jordan that he's yeah. untouchable. Yeah, but if you think about it, yeah. Jordan's never beaten the great teams in the 80s. He lost to the Detroit Pistons, he lost to the Celtics, he lost to the Lakers, he lost to the great teams. So people have this idea that Jordan always won. He lost when he came back. He came back from retirement, the first retirement. He came back, and they still lost to the uh, Orlando, Orlando Magic against Shaq and, yeah, and um, true. yeah. True. So people have this idea, like, six in a row. Well, Bill Russell won 12 cha 11 I championships. Well, see, see, when you talk about legacy, do you mean, like, comparing him to Jordan? Like, I mean, that's, that is always That's the goal. Ceiling. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, that's the ceiling. He was Jordan. never, the, before these finals that just happened, <coughs> he was never going to reach Jordan level. Jordan's... 6-0 in the finals, mm -hmm. with six finals MVPs. LeBron's record is just never going to match up. Say he wins uh, this year's finals. What's that, 4-4? Four four? It would have been 4-4, four four, yeah. still not 6-0. Oh. Like, yeah. He would have to reach six wins I, to be compared to Jordan. consecutively, at least. Like, not even consecutively. He did two wins with Miami. He gets six wins, and he's there with Jordan because he's got six rings, and it would have been the record, like you said, whether it's seven or eight, Consecutive NBA finals, that is some strength. Yeah, but Kareem Abdul Jabbar's won six, and no one says anything wrong. He has a, if you can make the argument that he has a better resume than Michael Jordan, if high school titles, college titles, NBA titles, like he's the all time leading scorer, sure. but no one mentions him. I so that's the kind of. So who would you rather have in your team? Kareem? I mean, that sky hook's pretty unstoppable, I'm not gonna lie. I'd have Michael, man. I would have Michael, I, yeah. But you have to remember this say, like, Especially the nineties, obviously, like black American culture was obviously like thriving in the nineties, like a lot along with entertainers, sports stars. I think the reason why he's so even till now, the trainers, the he did Space Jam. Come on, come on. I think it's Jordan. Different. Like, that's like why I his think legacy will be. Doctor J said it right. He came at the right time because that's when that's the media, saying, like, though. like especially in the eighties and nineties, the media we had more channels back then. I don't know how it was yeah. over in England, but like in the seventies and before that, it was just three channels: ABC, NBC, and. And I used CBS. to hear that they used to like. They used to be three channels. They used to like, 
share the replays. They used to be, yeah, because the NBA was yeah, 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 yeah. delayed, so yeah. like that you wouldn't watch like obviously technology is much yeah, different now with more Celtics and the Lakers with Bird and Magic that completely changed the way they say the NBA. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they needed that. Yeah. That's that's probably because they would even say that obviously they were kind of failing around that time. They needed that sort of narrative. I, I don't think it hurts his legacy. I mean, it's it was a difficult team. It was a good series. History. I mean, it was it's difficult to be consistently say that. That's one. It was a great series. No, I'm just saying that like the rivalry, like oh, the rivalry, yeah, the yeah, rivalry, yeah, yeah. not the series. Yeah. This series was not great at all. Yeah, yeah. It was one sided. But I'm just saying the fact that we had a trilogy oh, yeah. a that people expected, like it's coming, like there is going to happen again. I mean, it will happen again. <laughs> you think so? In this trilogy, there's I always been a different narrative. Yeah. In this, in, in this trilogy, there's always been a different narrative. What do you think the narrative will be next year if they do go into the finals? Redemption. Mm -hmm. For the Cavs. Redemption. There's redemption for, uh, for the uh, Golden State. In this series, they lost. They were three, they were three up and they lost the series. redemption, but it was also, can KD do it? Again. Yeah. That was the narrative. Next year, it will be LeBron redemption. Against two, three, obviously, the <laughs> best players in the world, obviously. Can so. LeBron conquer? Can LeBron fight defeat? Is as good as they say. The three-headed dragon. Yeah. <laughs> the Hydra. He made it sound like a Game of Thrones or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> like LeBron's Hercules. Right, guys. Let's go back to football. Manchester United striker Wayne Rooney was cut out of promotional photos, modelling the new kit. I mean, the, the the original photo had Pugba, Lingard, and Rooney, but obviously now that they they cut Rooney out of the picture, so. Is this what? What is this? That is Rudy's United career over now. What? What would you say is now? Is, is this a I don't my think United <sighs> statement of intent? It's over for you. I don't think a promotional pitch is going to determine whether Rudy's staying or not. I think this was coming for a long time. That I is don't true. think th that is now true. that he's not in a new kit promotional picture for the next season though. Yeah, I don't. Not think, just like I don't think you can now say, oh, now Rudy's not guy. Yeah. I mean, like, he was always gonna go. I think you could also think of it as like a marketing play. Like, okay, Rooney's from the old, old era. We're trying to rebuild, rebuild, rebrand ourselves. You know, we're not the Moyes, we're not the Van Gaal. So maybe let's, we have young players. Let's push them forward. Cause I, think, I think it's smart by United because they've got to sell it somehow, and it's a question of who can buy him. He's, he, he, he he can afford him. Yeah, he has to take a wage cut, but he has to take a significant wage cut. He won't take a wage cut. Oh, he has to because no team. He's not the same player anymore. He's not going to get the same wages. He's not been the same player for a very long time. And speaking as a Man United fan, I didn't like what he did in 2010 and 2013. Don't, don't get me wrong. Obviously, if you're a player, you want more than what you obviously already have. You want to... That was the time to sell him to Mourinho in, in 2013. And I Possibly. Was, I was really hoping we'd get him at the time. I'm so I, glad. I, I'm just, I'm just more now. upset what he did. Because even 2013, he wasn't, he wasn't the same player. 2010, he was still that... Still scoring goals for us. Oh, he, was, he was great. He was amazing 2010 and, and 13 too. Honestly, like, not 2013 season. He when they won the league. Dude, Van Persie? Yeah, but he, who was he was still He was still providing he was assists. assists. No, he wasn't. He, he was. was. But Van Persie? Yeah. Van Persie was scoring. But who, yeah. Who was playing behind Van Persie? I don't think Rooney had a big... He wasn't a pivotal player in that year. I don't think 100%. so. 100%. No way. Man. Yeah, 100%. Dude, I, trust I, me, I would know. Van Persie was on my team, all right? Honestly, so. like... This who is who played crazy. behind Van Persie? Van Persie was... He played a world... He played in number nine. Yeah, Who no. played behind Van Persie? Rooney. I'm not saying he didn't play there. I'm just saying I don't think he had a big impact. I mean... He still would have scored those goals. If there was ever a goal that summed up your season... That season. The goal against Aston, Aston Villa. Villa. I knew you were going to say that. He's in his own heart. I knew you were going to say that. All right, I can't. And I can't. Van, Van Persie just has the audacity to just go, it was a, it was a very good let's goal. just hit it. it and that just goal. summed up Van Persie's season. And it summed yeah. up Manchester United in a nutshell. In that, yeah. A great ball to Van Persie, goal. And that was but, how United won the league that year. Uh, uh, honestly, I don't Rooney had a good season. That was his last I good season, yeah. Season I don't think United. so. His last proper good season was the 2009-10 season when he actually scored over 25 What about, what about when he won the league in 2011? He was Chikorito. Chikorito came off the bench. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, he did. The 10-11 no, season. He started all the time. What are you Berbatov got joint top scorer with Tevez. Yeah, no. Tevez was... Tevez wasn't there. Tevez was a Man City player. So that's when he left at that no, time. No, Berbatov got Chikorito joint golden boot. Man United. Yeah, but Berbatov for Manchester United got joint golden boot. And he scored like a quarter of his goals against Blackburn that year. In the <laughs> Like, so... Like, it wasn't Chicharito. And you remember, Rooney was one of the strikers. He was horrible. 
Man, you guys don't like Rooney, man. No, you guys are haters, Rooney. man. Yeah. Man, you're not, I, man United I, fans, no, man. That's cool. I did a day, yeah. How I love you my say team. That? I love my team. Yeah. I can still criticize and love my team. Yeah, Ren Rooney is past it. Rooney and the reason why he, but well. he gets a pass because he's English. Let's just be realistic here. Oh, no. It's the truth. Who he gets a pass because he's English. Rooney. Who scored in the big games that season? Rooney. Who scored in the big games that season? Who scored? Chikorito. What are you on about? And Rooney. Man, you guys don't love Rooney, hey, man. Scored, you guys are... Who scored sorry. in the quarterfinals against Chelsea? Rooney. Exactly. Rooney. Man. I saw that game. Who scored in the last 16? Rooney. Who scored against Chelsea in the Premier League? Rooney. When was the last time he scored more than, what, 20 goals a year? He's in the tail end of his career. No, competitions. No, no, in the Premier League. I'm sorry. But it's really just not good enough for me anymore. He should have loved him. Yeah, very I, I'm not saying he's, he's a, a late player anymore, but he mm. was back then. I, I did just, no, nah, man. And I, I think, think you're he, right to sell him. He fell off a very long time ago. Well, you got very, six years. But that's not his fault. That was Fergie's fault for now. I feel like Fergie just left you with nothing after he left, after he retired, when he was at the tail end of his career when he left. I don't know, man. Just, just, but I think what for me is just in 2010, when he came out on camera and said, I am challenging, in, challenging the integrity of the club, that has not left my memory. And it doesn't sit right with me. And as a Man United fan, I can't just gloss over the fact that, yeah, he may have scored big goals for us on big occasions. Yeah, he may have... Um, won two Premier Leagues with us and helped Van Persie do his thing in that year, but I can't because you're not for the club then. You should have left. If you don't want to play for the team, leave. If you want a new contract, just say, look, behind the scenes, I want a new contract. That's yeah, but it's not as easy as you think it is, man. Clubs and... club who took you when you are a young boy and we've made your bud. career. You can't so, just walk out of a club. Unless but you're contract. He, but the, his United demeanor, were never willing to negotiate. His demeanour yeah. around that time was that. Wait, wasn't Fergie what controlling ne negotiations yeah, at the time? United were the one. United just didn't want to negotiate with anyone. Chelsea kept trying to sign him in 2014. That was Mourinho's priority that summer. You guys know. Why we ended up getting Eto on a free? I, I was. I don't know why Eto'o. we didn't sell Because it was like, like we left it too yeah. late. We were like, oh, yeah. they need a striker. It's weird, man. Well, we'll see what happens with Rooney now. I think he'll go to Everton. But he's definitely going to have to take a wage cut. Big I think time. big time. How, how, like, 50%? Yeah. That's reasonable. I wouldn't go below, blah, 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 yeah. uh, um, more than that, but... He's not going to get over 150k anyway. I don't think. It's like, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's a significant wage cut. I, I think mean, Terry's still getting 100k per week. But, I mean, if he goes to Bournemouth... Look at the foe. The foe's getting over 100k per week now. What? And Bournemouth, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. It's, it's mad. I think um, the Defoe does probably... The best deal that Rooney could possibly get, I mean, to be honest. To add Everton? Definitely. I mean, it, I think it's what pay as you pay, something like that. Every day, time you score a goal, no, you No, the post got a long time, like two to three year deal at Bournemouth. They, the, the Bournemouth have taken a massive gamble on the post. Yeah. I, I, I don't and a big signing on yeah. bonus as well because he's a free yeah. agent. That's not bad. Good business. Now, traditionally, Premier League games are played at 3 or 5.30 p.m. on a Saturday. However, now new proposals would see Premier League games move to Saturday at 7.45. Guys, is this damaging for the league? Uh, yes, 100%. <laughs> it's, it's not even close. Like, it shouldn't even be a discussion. This is mm. terrible. If you're an away fan and you are going from, say you're a Newcastle fan and you've got a away game at Bournemouth, you've got to go... You've got to leave Bournemouth at 10 o'clock in the evening to go back to Newcastle. Mm. That's if you want to go straight home. Otherwise, you've got to make plan for accommodation there. That is terrible. And if you're a fan, the whole point of the weekend for a football fan is you wake up, it's the weekend, you go, to your, you go, go during the day to see your team. You know, do you, you think get, they're you doing get, this? You get some food, like, See, from, from an American point of view, that, that helps us out. I was just going to say that. <laughs> helps me yeah, out. They, they could look. It's a strong... They play 11pm games. But that's, the, but that's so the... They do. But that's the problem. Really I think that's the do. problem with the Premier League. They're prioritising <clears throat> foreign fans over the fans so, that attend the game. It's all about that money, my friend. Yeah, all but... All about that money. What's, firstly, what, but what's the point of showcasing to um, foreign audiences when people stop turning up to games, when you've got empty grounds? Because that's what will happen. If you start making, you, you scrap 3 o'clock games, you, you scrap um, afternoon games, 
on a weekend and you start having them at half seven, eight o'clock, there will be less crowds. But people watch Friday it. night football for me has not been a big success. That, that's terrible. Yeah, they shouldn't have done that. That's that's horrible. What was even they worse was that, that they had West Ham versus Chelsea. Uh, sorry, West Ham versus Tottenham at the Olympic Stadium. They were lucky nothing kicked off there. That was probably one of the worst night game fixtures you could have. And then they put it on a Friday night. That's insane. I just, honestly, I don't. I think maybe we should, they they should trial it and just see what actually happens. It's not the end of the world. There'll be more trouble as well. Okay. Because we have nice pictures. You have to remember, it's not going to be like there's only going to be certain teams that obviously need to be strategic with it and not put yeah. Chelsea versus West Ham or Tottenham versus West Ham. Clearly. Yeah, but, but I, I think it's damaging for the Premier League because it, it just, it, the part, it's the British culture. It's the football culture in this country. Mm. You wake up on a Saturday, you go, you go to fancy your local team, you watch them with with your mates or your dad or something, and then you go home, Do you, you watch the highlights of match the day or something, or you go out. Do you not think yeah. it's in Europe though? Nothing. Think about it, you're saying, well, English teams, we have five English teams next but year. How would that help you out? Because fight. you're still playing on the same day as you would normally. Just later. But you're playing later, which but affects you. No, you know what? I, to recover. Yeah, because then you couldn't watch matches the day after. That's true. Watching the highlights later at night, I mean. Yeah, well, how are they going to do the highlights and stuff? How are you going to. Like, for me, from a broadcasting schedule as well, it's terrible for Sky. I mean, I imagine this is BT. That's pretty Most probably, yeah. Most probably. But look, it's, it's all about money. Damaging, isn't it? but, but, yeah, it is. But. You, you can't ignore mm. the fans because the fans make this. What is the point of but Premier bro, League games when just, no one's there? You just said it though. You can't ignore the fans. Yeah. They're not just Premier League fans in England. They're yeah, like but, me, like he said, yeah, Premier League fans all around the world. Turn, yeah, turn but you should you should cater to the home that's fans though. That's yeah. the thing. People actually attending, well, what, they, they're affected. What, like to me, I can watch the game regardless. Like change it. Hey, it's later for me. I don't have to wake up so early to watch the games mm -hmm. in America. But mm -hmm. over here, it's like you do have to take into consideration like traveling. What is the point of showcasing the Premier League? This great league to foreign fans when there's no one in the ground. You you, you cut off that fan group. It does make a difference. It that's does. It, like in South America, there are some clubs that there's no attendance and it does look bad on camera. It's just not visually appealing. It just yeah. shows that okay, this game's not worth my time. Why would I watch that? That does affect the viewers' attention right there. Because mm -hmm. when I see that, I'm like, well, I'm not gonna watch this game, man. This well, game's yeah, biggest, no atmosphere. Yeah. One of the biggest selling points of the Premier League is the British atmosphere. Yeah. You yeah. get through to that. Uh, yeah. You have it like, some aspect, yeah. and it's going to cause more trouble. No case, because you are always going to get people out on the drink, going to these yeah. games. Causing more it's trouble, please. Mm. Sure, the uh, clubs, the clubs mm. might not sell in, uh, booze inside the grounds, but the local no, clubs. Yeah. So this sounds like more like a ploy to get more international audiences. It's, 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 it's good for the international front, but I, honestly, like obviously Jack was saying, like I don't really think it would make sense in terms of first no, the no. culture of, yeah. of the British game. Secondly, it, it will bring more trouble. Definitely. You know, we even said that the imagine, yeah, seeing I mean, West Ham versus Tottenham is Saturday, seven forty five. That ruins your night, right? That, 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 that ruins so, your night. They, they were so lucky that there was um, not much trouble um, when West Ham won. I mean yeah. I imagine if West Ham had lost there would have been a lot more backlash after the game. I mean look at when um, Chelsea played West Ham in the cup at the Olympic Stadium back in October. Mm. And you had them ripping seats off and launch them for Chelsea fans. Chelsea fans launching stuff back. The amount, the amount of police, it, it's, it's even worse for the police force because they'll, they'd be, they'd need more people at games. More security, nice more. That's true, yeah. Yeah. That's true. So the cost for that go up even more. So I imagine tickets will then be more expensive, and you're going to have fans again boycotting games like they have done in protest for the past two. That's years. what I like about this, like football fans here. Like you guys have a fan association in the states. Like the owners do not care. They will make it like the NFL and the NBA. They will bring a game over here. Mm regardless of what the fans say. So I do like the fact that fans have more voice. So I think, you know, I th think I agree they probably will say something to fan associations because it is really inconvenient on oh, their part. Um, they, they, they had a meeting a couple months ago and this this was never discussed. Mm. Now it's been announced that this proposal has been announced. The fan association have come out and said, why haven't we been briefed on this? Why, have, why was this never discussed? Mm. It's It's... It's just a terrible, but, why, terrible. but why is it that the TV, I feel like, like Sky and the TV networks more dictate the, the, the scheduling of, of the Premier League? It's just, I've never seen anything like that. It's usually the opposite way. That, that, like, even, even, you even saw like, Champions just, League, it used to be on ITV. And they sold their the souls to the, to the network. Oh, it's because they're broadcast money. It's because on Channel 5, it just, every single time, you just say, what, what's your opinion with Champions League? Well, it's you funny know, you should say that about ITV and Champions League. Do you know the numbers for the Champions League? The past two seasons have been at the all-time lows in this country. Of course, history. What, what do you expect? 
There's yeah, people who can't afford to watch Sky and pay however much they pay for it's the It's funny, but, um, and BT you, as well. you look at Sky's last uh, season of showing the Champions League, it was the Juventus Barcelona final in 2015. Mm. The numbers for that was 500,000 watched it on Sky, 2.5 million watched it on ITV. That's because that's terrestrial dude. TV. Yeah, it's free. More people. It's, apart from the TV license, like, there's no subscription. Yeah, it's true. Oh, people that just watch it on the stream too. Yeah, that is, yeah, more people doing that now because no one's gonna. There's people that there's some people that have Sky and BT. But what? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so does BT yeah. get to get the pay for both? Yeah, yeah, it's two different subscriptions. You guys don't have like a you guys don't have like a, a package here. No, no, it's two different subscriptions. Oh my god, they're ripping you off over here. Yeah, yeah I mean it used to be. Out of but most people only have one. I, I know. Yeah, and it's normally Sky. but we it's do get more games than you guys though in the states. You do yeah. because you, you got yeah. the, the black the blackouts. Am I correct? Because we get yeah. those games. It's, a, it's against the law in this country to show three o'clock kickoffs on yeah. Saturday. Are you serious? Yeah, it's we get what, those games in the states. That's why they only show the early one and the last. Mm, the yeah, we get those. In the, we, shame, we, we get the whole package. Which is why Match of the Day has such a uh, dominant viewership. Because it's the first the only one we could. Yeah. You, know. you guys don't have a lot of like high, highlights over here. Yeah, I'm, t I'm looking for like other highlights. It's just match of the day. Yeah. So we use the BOB over here, and I just watch match of the day. So okay, so obviously this proposal, we're saying it's not as good. It's not really a good idea, because basically purely because of the, of the international aspect of it. So then, you know, obviously the NFL and the NBA have international series in London and European cities. Do you think that we should possibly play one league game in America? To accommodate their fans? How else can we accommodate them? No. Nope. That's the reason why they're doing this proposal, clearly. No. So what uh, else can we do? I, I think that's a terrible idea again. Because you're selling, you're selling the self of the game. You're selling the English game. The whole but point But that's what it is now. It's a product. The it's whole, not just football. Okay, but that's the thing. The whole, like, it's, it's a culture thing in this country. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you were, like, most people were born into football from their yeah. families. You get taken to your club. And that's how you fall in love with your club. It starts off with you go games with your dad, and then as you get older, you go games with your mates, and then as you get older, you go games with your new family. It's part of your identity, really. Yeah, and yeah. the whole what makes the Premier League so great is that it is fast, action-paced, the style the of the base. game, and it's the world goes. But most massive. importantly, it is the cultural and atmosphere, the mm. British culture and atmosphere. You can see it in I these games, think. which is why. Uh, people outside this country are so appealed to watching the Premier League but because they see the one game, and stuff. Yeah, but it's I still one think game. that's a bad idea. Because I don't think one game is going to hurt. Well, if there's what, what, 38 what, games I mean, to me, like... Once what, you go what, to what, fucking what? LA, well, who would not want to go to LA? Yeah, but sorry. If you can go to these random like countries like Kazakhstan to play FC Metalist Carcass, so, so why I mean, wouldn't you want to go to LA so, and watch so it play? So I in LA. And it's the title decider. I mean, a do I feel like, I feel like I feel like a derby shouldn't be played in a foreign. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Okay, look, even when the international series comes, but where, to where, London, where, it's never it? a top game. The last one wasn't it Denver Nuggets and um, the Pacers? Yeah, the Pacers. Would you in watch the, in the Premier League versus Newcastle in LA, for example? Huh. But people still. I mean, they, they, I think they would have to put a big like, like they would have to play like a uh, Manchester versus like Southampton it, or something. It would, it would never like that's every, every huh? game is a big game. game a no, but that's how you sell the game over there. Cause that's a, that's a widely known club over there. Like Manchester so United are maybe famous. Maybe mid-table team. So let's say West Ham versus Everton. They could package that and sell that. Yeah, people would want to watch that. Uh, yeah, but what about the West Ham fans? What about the Everton fans? It's just one. It's the just thing one is, is that look. It, the thing is, is that like, like I said over here, the Premier League does listen to its fans. The NFL and NBA. They don't care what they say. They're going to do what they want. It's their business model. And that's why I don't think the league would, the FA would not do it. These proposals have been going on for a long time. Yeah, um, the thing is, that they wanted things. the 38 game the season, the very last game, to be played in Dubai. Mm, All of the games. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not for that. Just, the, the that reaction, was a dumb idea. The, the reaction was that just, was a dumb idea. no, no, no. But my question is, how much does the fan association have say in this, in this country? Like, I mean, do they have that much not power? Much, not as much it's as It's just the fans. Oh. I mean, we, we, we talked about this off camera. A, couple, uh, a year or two ago, Liverpool played Sunderland at Anfield. And I think Liverpool won the while, but they ended up conceding two late goals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But before the goals were conceded, about 80th to 85th minute, the clock hit. And then every fan just got up and left. Left because the ticket price was too high. Of course, yeah. there's still fans there during the game, but it was just, mm. all we could hear was the Sunderland fans because most of the cop had gone home. It was a protest. Uh, it was to do with Liverpool charging high ticket prices now. And fans didn't want to do it. And there's been protests, not just at Liverpool, Arsenal, Sunderland, 
Arsenal. Arsenal cool. players, they play. I haven't yeah, been to Arsenal games. It's so expensive. Cool, yeah. But they did, they did produce a result, though, because the ticket prices did go down for the Liverpool fans. Like, Arsenal hasn't changed. Like, yeah. Arsenal uh, Arsenal have, like, that typical, like, Stan Kroenke is that American manager. He does not care what you guys think. Yeah. Uh, FSG, FSG, they, you know, they, to, to their credit, they did listen. And this isn't just a Premier League thing. This is Championship League One as well. You've seen it with the Blackpool fans. I mean, look at <laughs> a great example of this is Blackpool went to Wembley in a playoff final. We went to League One. Um, they played Exeter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was 1,000 fans there? Something like that. I remember the lowest numbers. Less. Numbers, yeah. Like, That's and then you, they were in the playoff final for the Championship. Playoff Go championship playoff yeah. Final yeah, yeah, yeah. In 2011. Yeah. Oh, sorry, tr uh, 2012, and there was thousands of them there. And you look at it, there was a picture that compared both, like 2012, 2017, and the difference was just. Incredible. I mean, to be fair, they were getting promoted. And that was though. because of the club. Yeah. They, they, they were getting promoted. To be fair, that doesn't make a difference. Yeah, but they're both playoff finals. Yeah. One's mm. one's League One playoff final, one's Championship playoff final, and uh, the difference is because. The owners have destroyed the club uh, to the point where fans are now just disillusioned with the club. They don't probably turn up to games, and that is that is what you always That's run what the risk. Now. That is what you yes. always run the risk. Yeah, of if you try and mm. mess with the fans. The fans just won't but go. This is what happens when and you, foreign and you owners kill. buy these clubs. Oh, they don't care. Look at Charlton. Charlton's going through the, the same thing. Leighton Orient, same thing. Yeah. They're going down. Leeds, 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 man. They want Not to make profit. profit. That's it. They just yeah. make profit. Forest. They don't care about the it's a business now. It's more, it's more of a business. It's, it's a, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I, I honestly think I the, think, uh, I think the international fight. series will actually happen for the Premier League. I think we'll play. I don't think tomorrow. it'll happen. I don't think Maybe it will. Maybe not the 38th game. That's kind of a weird idea because no. you want to see the last day. As a man United fan, I still have Aguero in my head, unfortunately. But those are the, the moments you live for. Maybe the, the game just for, in the run-up, like a November game, for example, or a game around December would probably be okay. A Boxing Day game abroad? No, that, I don't Why think that, that's a... We that's play, that's we very play English. That's very... That's look, I'm not even English, but I'm against that. That's very English. Time. Yeah, but that should be in England. That's an yeah. English tradition. Mm -hmm. I, it's I, like I, a, playing I, a Thanksgiving I, game, NFL game over here. What, what the hell? I don't think the, it'll, the it'll Christmas period idea. of the Premier League, mm. of the English Division One, has been one of the biggest. It's the it's the biggest part of the season, arguably, <coughs> apart from the title deciders, apart from the relegation deciders. It is the biggest part of our season. I don't think one, one game on this there. season. There's even more think. games between Christmas Day and New Year's the Day. Six. I think I saw the because they they yeah. want the, the season to finish early, yeah. so we can prepare for the World Cup. People love it. It is, it is, it is by far one of the most exciting times of the season. I, I don't think it, ha it will happen. The abroad thing. Happen. I don't think so. They have happen. to have the guts to say, like, you know Eventually, what? I think if they try it, the they'll be pro it'll be outrage. Yeah, outrage. Yeah. And the reaction what will speaks? be. Money speaks. Well, I think yeah, but that's what they were saying about the super team for the Champions League. That didn't happen. We'll give in eventually because money speaks. Come on. It does. It there does, but I don't. You just made a great point there about the Super League. That won't happen. That won't happen. No way. Oh, the European thing. Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. That's gonna happen. It's the same thing over here, though. It's no, like, the Premier League's the most watched league in the world that has generated arguably the second most, most broadcast rates in terms of football. Like, yeah. I don't think that, like, like, yeah, I understand the business aspect, but I don't, I don't think the, the administrators, the FA, would allow it. Or, do you, okay, as a last point, do you reckon it will happen when we start getting threatened, when we're not number one, number two in the world? When, when that threat of being the most lucrative and the most exciting, oh shit, now we have the. I, I don't think I don't think it's gonna happen for a while because the Bundesliga is, is everyone knows Bayern's gonna win it. I mean, yeah, PSG. I mean, the league on it was just it was it's a slip not up. Gonna happen because you have to have a league. Wise, you, you uh, La Liga, the league is starting to change that. It, they, is they, they don't distribute the money fairly. It's like in, in Spain, Real Madrid That's and true. Barcelona get most of the money. Serious. Over here, it's just like the Edmund gets money equally, yeah. which makes it more competitive. Uh, yeah, they, what they do is they base TV revenue off where you finish. In the league, yeah, yeah. basically. But like, oh, yeah, the, the, the other leagues would have to generate the same kind of revenue as the Premier League, so yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. They have, they, it's just, just the way it is. Yeah. The, has to, something has to like happen. In order for that to happen, they, the other leagues have to catch up, and that's not going to happen right now, especially if the, the wages keep increasing, the ATB rights. So, I think the Premier League's fine for a couple of years now. Will be good. Right. Well, the season may be over, but there's still plenty of rumors to keep us entertained. Jack us all the latest transfers. Jack, what do you have for us? Well, yesterday, 
Joan Luigi Donorama um, turned down a brand new uh, contract from Ace Milan, 8K per week. He's 18 years old, and he's uh, on his current contract, he's got one year left. So Ace Milan have to now in decision this summer. They've either got to keep him on, and he just leaves the club on the free, and, or they sell him. Now, he's, he's by far one of the most exciting prospects in world football right now. Easily the new, the best, youngest goalkeeper going. Definitely, um, I agree. I agree. It's massive. I mean, Milan uh, posted a Ace Milan posted a club statement yesterday, uh, stating that he's refused a decision or he's refused to turn down a contract. And it's no surprise that his <laughs> his agent is Rayola. Big shock. The you same know, agent. Yeah, no, start to, yeah, no. Mass, massive shock. I'm not that, like, I don't football man. Come on. Lukaku. I mean, the list goes on, and reports he's, say that it's Rayola. That is behind him. That is, that kind of told him not to take the contract. Of course, to leave. This guy and is slimy, man. I hate that guy. The, he gets the job done though. The, the Twitter memes, yeah, he's after that payday. Yeah. The Twitter memes have been hilarious today with this name, uh, Judas mm-hmm. memes. I mean, I I don't know where he's gonna go. I'm sure Ram. I think the two favourites right now is Real Madrid, PSG. This is interesting because it could start a merry go round. That's what I like to see sometimes. The hair. I like seeing that. I like the hey, You keep his name out there. <laughs> that, that is the merry-go-round. But Jose actually, Jose actually said that he the hair values the hair to... at 100 million. The he hair was... to Real Madrid. You think he's going to sell him though? No. Well, the merry-go-round would be the hair to Real Madrid, no. Donnarumma to Manchester United. But ah, Buffon's retiring after the World Cup. That's true. Oh, but they, he said if he wins the Champions League, he might sell another year. Though. But they're on the verge of signing Chesney. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Do they cancel yeah. that? Do they get Donnarumma? Yeah. PSG are willing to get rid of Sirigu and get Donnarumma. Real Madrid obviously want Donnarumma. Mm-hmm. He has definitely put Ace Milan in a horrid position. Definitely. I mean, if I was, if I was Milan, he's 18 years up. old. It's the World Cup year. Yeah. He's got a big chance of going to the World Cup, being Buffon's understudy, possibly playing. He'll play a couple of games. Well, uh, I don't know, but it's a, it's well, a, World a Cup year. I don't, I don't think he will play a bit World Cup. Risk if he was to go somewhere and then underperform. Exactly. It'd be a massive risk. Exactly. Do it now while you're high. But yeah, but if he was to say this, he'd be like, be sick. He's doing it. What he's doing his thing right now. Be amazing, and then possibly, it's possibly good. start. You you're, never know. You're, you're the World Cup. You never know. You are guaranteed first team football in his position at East Milan. Mm. Um, this the next big transfer is Alvaro Morata to Manchester United. <laughs> He, so, um, sources in England and also Spain have stated that he has agreed personal terms with Manchester United. However, is there no increase? No contract? Yeah, but the fee's got to be agreed between the two clubs. Yeah. Mm. Um, Real Madrid are standing firm on 90 million euros. It's 90 now. Oh. Apparently, Manchester United have had a 70 million euro bid rejected. That is quite ridiculous considering um, Real Madrid activated the buyback clause last summer. To get him for 30 mil. That's and he horrible. needs to be a backup player. Although, when he has played this season for Real Madrid, he has been fantastic. He, he's a top striker. In my opinion, even though Chelsea are looking for a striker right now, and yeah, it looks you like you the A. We're looking to get Lukaku. In my yeah, opinion, Lukaku, right a reject, there. huh? My opinion. He's getting a reject, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the irony. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. Hey, 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 Paul Pogba. Hey. He left on the free. Yeah, you got played. That's yeah. worse. Congratulations, you got played. But yeah, in my opinion, he is, maybe apart from Aubameyang, he is easily the best striker available right now. Alan Belotti, Lukaku, Lacazette, Aubameyang. I love how you said Lukaku. Morata is by far one of the best we get right now. I don't he's think proven he's, I don't... in Italy. He's proven in Spain. He's different to most strikers like Belotti, Lukaku. Similar to Aubameyang in that he loves making that run off the last man in between the two centre backs. He's diverse in the fact that if he, he can get the ball and he got he can go out wide and take a man on. The only thing I don't like about these sort of players is that they're not proven in England yet. Hence why I actually think for Man United I'd prefer Harry Kane. Oh. Yeah but he's played in England though I mean I think I feel like he has a better resume think, than Harry Kane. I don't think Mara has enough strength well, good luck getting Harry to Kane. play <laughs> Hey, look, they're you know, not selling him. I mean, they right. sold bail. You never know. Million and Rashford, Harry Kane. You never know. They sold bail. <laughs> but they didn't sell bail to Manchester United. That's bail true. turned down Manchester United. 
He did actually, yeah. And okay, the I don't I don't think Mario's strong enough for the Premier League. I don't okay. know if he's strong enough. I think because he played in Italy. He played Italy, man. It's not easy playing in Italy. Uh, they play defense in Italy. Uh, Italian Italian defenders have uh, this philosophy. Either the man's getting past me, or the ball's getting past me. Mm. Neither, uh, but neither is getting. Nah, it's it's very difficult to score in Italy. It's very tight to score in Italy, and it's a very strong mentally. Yeah, it's, they still have that obviously that cultural he, sort of men, defensive mentality. He, he will fit in perfectly into the Premier League because he's pacey. He's got an eye for goal. He's very good inside the box, but he's he's adaptable. He can play on the wing, and that opens up space for players in the central position. And the third uh, transfer will be credit him to Liso. Mm -hmm. Uh, Leon midfielder, 22 years old, French international. He's had a fantastic season this season for Leon. Linked with Chelsea, I'm very glad about this, but just signed in the past few days for Bayern Munich. Uh, 35 million euros. Big, big deal. Great thing, I think, for him, for his quality. He would have been perfect for Chelsea next to N'Golo Kante. He's no, no, he looks like a player that could play in the Premier League. Talisa yeah, is a box to box midfielder. Mm. He has the attacking prowess, the score, the long range. Mm -hmm. But he's a, from where he differs to Fabregas, if he had played for Chelsea, is that he has got the defensive capabilities. He's more attacking than Matic. He's better defensively than Fabregas. He would have been perfect next to Kante. Mm. Bayern Munich have got a great box to box midfielder. But the problem I'm seeing is these midfielders, they've got Thiago, Vidal, Talisa. Um, They've got Kimmich who can play centre mid, but he will most likely be playing right back now. Lamp's gone. Oh and yeah. And they've got Renato Sanchez. That's the thing. I think I think clubs. Alonso's gone players. now. I think which clubs might play for the defensive just to not mm. allow other players to go uh, to certain clubs. That's like a bargaining chip. Yeah, I think I, they I, do I've that. I've never bought that. Renato Sanchez. <laughs> yeah. If, Come on. It was a great time. He would have started for us. I don't think Bayern got him because of Manchester United ventures. Not just Bayern's us. Bayern's fee was cheaper than but not just United specifically stuff. us. He I chose think just bigger clubs in general. He we chose want that talent, so you don't have it. He chose Bayern Munich over you. He, he said Manchester mm. United had a fee agreed for him, and he chose Bayern Munich. Fair enough. Um, Bayern's problem, the way I see it, is this: um, Alonso's left, so the defensive midfield role is open. Thiago can't play defensive mid. He's their, he's their advanced playmaker. He leads up the play with Lewandowski. Vidal can't play defensive mid. He's far too rash and he's challenging and he's a fantastic box to box. Toliso can't play defensive mid. Another box to box. So it's going to be interesting to see what Carlo does. Um, Carlo is very good at adapting his teams. To very. But he did it at Chelsea. Very good at he did it at um, Real Madrid and he's done it at PSG. And he, he's going to do it with Bayern Munich. I mean, they've won the league. That's not always good enough. I mean, yeah, that's a that's a failure. Yeah, they're not, you know, they, they they lost against Borussia Dortmund. They didn't go far in the Champions oh, League, yeah. so it's yeah. just. Um, the f the fourth biggest rumor is uh, two parts, and it's with Everton. They have oh, just Jesus signed Christ. David Klassen. For good his, signing for twenty three point five mil, I believe, and they Jesus. have just signed the under twenty one England under twenty one goalkeeper Jordan Pickford, thirty mil, making him one of the most expensive goalkeepers of all time. He I is. think that's a great signing, personally. Pickford? Yep. I don't think so, bro. Uh, Why not? I don't think he's way... I don't think the, the fee does not match the player. Definitely not. But... Definitely not. That's the, that's the English premium. I think it's a great signing for him, and I think mm -hmm. it's a great signing for English football. He's going to get a lot of games on ever good because mm -hmm. I don't rate any of their goalkeepers. Stecklenburg. Yeah. Rubbles. Mm. I, I don't think... <laughs> you I, can say <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I don't think they are great goalkeepers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pickford um, was probably the only shining star apart from Defoe of that Sunderland team. Sunderland were absolutely abysmal yeah, last season. Yeah, they last year, man. But they would have conceded a lot more goals had Pickford not played. He had a Thank great you. season for a team that got relegated, a team that conceded so many goals. I think it's a great signing. I really do. Um, I'm not sure about Klassen. I mean, it'd be interesting to see where he plays. I mean, he's more, I like he's more of an attacking midfielder. We were, they were after Sigurdsson. We it'd be interesting to see where Rooney fits into that. I mean, mm. it's interesting that they've spent pretty much 55 They've spent million. a lot of money. Everton, and you don't really hear you've that. You've got one that is yeah. Lukaku and then finally... Because they have a new owner, though, right? They, they got a new owner, don't they? 
Yeah, the new owner said that he was. I remember when he got when he I mean, when he got bought the team. He wanted pretty much funded by Arsenal's uh, shareholder Usmanov, Usmanov's yeah. uh, friend, and his friend's company is funded by Usmanov. So it's a bit uh, yeah. Yeah, and so two big signings for Everton, and with a lot of money spent. Who do you you've think? You've got to wonder Lukaku surely out the door now. I think I think a big reason why Chelsea haven't announced. Lukaku is because their Adidas deal has just finished. They've just got themselves out of that, allowing themselves to sign with Nike, and that is starting this summer. They haven't announced a new kit, so it'd be very awkward if they announced a new signing. Maybe Lukaku, they announce a new signing with him in the old Chelsea kit with Adidas all over it. Nike, yeah, Nike sponsors weird, yeah. would not like that. I think there's a lot of truth in that holding up the deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fifth and final rumour is to do with Chelsea. TMA Bakayoko, the Monaco midfielder. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chelsea have been tr- uh, trying to get him for a couple of months now. They've been trying to engineer a move. United plus um, other Premier League clubs were linked with him, but it seems that he's chosen Chelsea. The, it's just trying to get the fee done and get the signing over the line now. Major French outlets are saying that Chelsea have offered 30 million euros, but Monaco uh, are only selling for 50. He's 22 years old. Do you think it's worth it? I think he'd be a great signing. He's very similar to Matic. I would have much rather had Toledo, but beggars can't be choosers for Chelsea. Yeah, at least you're a beggar, man. I'm like, my club, my club. <laughs> I can't do anything, man. Uh, he's, a, he, he's 22 years old and he's a giant. He is built like a wall. And it'd be a very interesting combination with him and Kante. An exciting one in midfield. And it's, it's a player that you'd think Kante would love and someone that you'd want... You'd imagine Conte would want next to Kante in his midfield. I don't know where that leaves Matic with Chelsea. He'll leave. He'll leave. But I you imagine so? Chelsea will get leave. that deal done this summer. Who do you think will make the biggest impact of, of the signings? That have happened so far? Yeah, all those players you just mentioned. The rumours. Yeah. The rumours, yeah. Uh, I think you've got to go with Bernardo Silva from Manchester City. Morata um, mm-hmm. would be a big one. You've got to say Morata. You need a replacement. You need a striker. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Morata would help us in that regard. I mean, Liverpool I, haven't made any major signs yet. Salah's on the hold, and mm. the Van Dijk transfer saga has been Jesus a Christ. complete and utter embarrassment for Liverpool. Um, there, yeah. Whoever, who, whoever leaked that is in serious trouble, if not still working for that club. Um, Manchester City, they're still after Carl Walker. They're still after Mendy from. Uh, Monaco. Uh, Manchester United were linked with Fabinho, but Mourinho has completely ruled that out. I think that would have been a major Oh, nah, see, no, that is just transfer. That's just transfer trash. I, I think. I read know. that as a slide. Nah. Swipe. Nah, nah. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, Sorry. Fabinho would have been. Not good. Per- what? I don't rate Fabinho. Just because he plays in Liverpool, is that why? Not even. I don't rate him. Oh. I don't think he's that good. He's a good player. I think, I think he's, a, he's a sporadic player. He's not consistent enough for me. I mean, that's Liverpool in general. Fabino. Oh, Fabino. Oh, I heard Firmino. I thought, I heard oh, Firmino. sorry. When you said Liverpool, I was like, what? No, I heard no, Firmino. No. Oh, Firmino. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Firmino. Okay. Uh, Apologies. I, I thought it was just me then. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Firmino too, but okay. The Monaco midfielder. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Man, Monaco's just feeder club, man. Oh, my he, God. He would have just won the league. He would have been, been perfect for Manchester United because he would have been a defensive midfielder that would have replaced Carrick and he would have allowed Pogba to have a more advanced role with and up being the box to box. Or Tony Cruz comes to United. That's not happening. I mean, I, it's good for you to have friends. <laughs> it's, it's nice, I guess. Theater of Dreams, remember? Theater of Dreams, that's, that's your home? Yeah, well, you've never been there, so. <laughs> Manchester United. I have been to Manchester United. Manchester United, I'm in here. Damien, Damien, here. Rage for the stars. Look, man, I want both of my club. Next year, the club that you've never been to? I've been there seven <laughs> times, first and secondly. We're going to win the quadruple next year, so. Yeah, what are you smoking, man? Hey. Give me some of that stuff. <laughs> In that sentence alone, you basically just turned away our whole viewership. That one person that was watching the show. All the, all the you know, London United fans will just turn up to say, That yeah. makes no sense, London. <laughs> right, guys, that's all from us. An early one can win. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.